Joseph with American Trade Masters. I got a couple tips to share today. Um, today we're doing an install on a corner sink. And uh, this corner sink has an angle to it. And so there's a few techniques I wanted to share on how I go about doing this. On this particular install, it was a little bit more difficult because we had to fall back in the same footprint because they were using the same tops, the granite tops. We're going to use them over. So um, the first thing I wanted to show you is um, how we put together this, um, this corner. This was uh, just a sink front, they call it. It's just a, basically a face frame without a box. And um, then you have to build a platform in, on the inside of there. Um, what I want to show you is how I did my fillers. You'll notice that I did my filler with an overlap versus, um, versus trying to do this corner doing two miters together. Um, it's very difficult to do that. There's no room for, for error. The way I did was I did uh, an overlap and and that's the, the best way to take care of these corners. The, they come together a lot nicer. Um, the way you start this whole setup is you have to start uh, before the cabinets are in. You, you Basically you'll measure the depth of the cabinet 24 inches with a straight edge on both sides and you'll snap a line on the floor here and then you'll do the same thing over here you'll come out 24 inches and you have to be careful with the, the, the lean of the wall sometimes if the wall is out then you have to make corrections for that to get these lines accurate and then you're gonna um, do the same thing in the center you're gonna you're gonna do a straight line here once you get that you'll get your point to point measurements you'll have an intersection here and then you'll have an intersection here. And that will determine your spaces that you have available on this angle. And that's very critical um, to make sure you do that because that's going to determine the size of this filler right here will, um, will be from a point measurement here intersecting to the end of the wall over here. And that's how you get your point to point measurements to determine the, these fillers. And in this case, we we went straight on on this, and then we did our angle fillers on each side here. That worked out best in this case. Uh, one of the tricks I would want to show you is how to put this filler on because we pre-install these fillers before we put them in. And there's a little template that I made up. Um, to grab this filler, so if so, if you're let's just assume that this is is your piece here, you got to attach it to here. Well, you can't clamp it because if you clamp it, it's going to mess that up. So this little template that I made, very simple to make. You just cut a 45. Whoops! You cut a 45, and then you sandwich this together with glue. Once you have that, then you can seat your filler into that, and then. You get your clamp, and then see you can you can clamp onto that without damaging it. And that's how we that's how we do these fillers with the with an angle. So that's a little tip trick of the trade. And then on to how do we how do we go about putting a floor in this now? So we got the face frame all built up, and you can see I put my platform in. And what I did was I just ran one one length in the back and one in the front. And how I determine that height is I will just um, I will just take a level and level it across and actually measure it. Once I find the highest point, I'll cut my material to that and then I shim it up with these with these shims. You'll see here. We put some cross uh, struts in here but it was more because we had a vent in here that it, um, really needed it because the material that we're going to use for the bottom is probably going to be half inch to three quarter inches thick. So the next step on, on doing this is okay these are these are um, close to being 45 okay um, you can use an angle finder to find that angle for you but uh, rather than start cutting up on your material trying to find out all these unknown measurements, what you're going to want to do is start with a cardboard template. And um, we've already got one that's all, all ready made, but I went back and, and cut another one here just so you can see how I start this off. 
So we, we know that this is a 45, close to it. It's probably not going to be perfect. But what we did was we cut, we cut this piece of cardboard to this thickness. And, and, and we ran it straight. We got one cut put over here with a 45 that we used. You know, we just come over here and, you know, you just line up your, you line up your square and you cut it. All right? So that gets us started. The cardboard is longer than what we need. What we'll do is we'll fold it in half like this. And then once we made our cut, you see, we can come in here like this. Now that's not an exact cut. That's not an exact fit. You can see that there's a gap. So what we're going to do is called scribing. We're going to just take and we're going to go along the wall with a pencil just to, to, to get that exact measurement, making sure we're um, all the way up against the wall on that side. Then we're going to take and we're going to scribe that. We're going to cut it with a nice sharp razor knife. We're going to cut it like that. And then, now we have more of an exact, exact fit on that side. As soon as we have this where we want it, now we can go with a point to point measurement. So now what we can do is we'll, we'll take this measurement. As you can see, we found some mold over here, but it's dried and we're going to have to cut that out, but we'll do that later. Um, this uh, this measurement is 47 and a half. So now we're going to transfer that known measurement to here, 47 and a half. Once we get that, then we're going to take our square again, and we're going to we're going to put it here, and we're going to mark a line right there. Once we get that line marked, and remember this is long, so we're going to take and I cut that a little bit just. We struggle with it. Okay, so there's our cut right there. All right, so now we have the back measurement all cut out. So we can come in here and we can look at it. And if this doesn't fit exactly perfect, you can actually put a piece of duct tape over here if you really want to get critical. But don't get too carried away because once we drop this floor in, it's going to change a little bit anyhow. So now you can see we have that back measurement, but these are long. So now what you want to do is you want to come down under here and you trace it with a pencil all the way around the inside and all the way around that side. And then once you have these lines determined, you just flip it over and you're going to cut it just like this one. I'll show you my template. So here's the, here's the template we, we created. So see how that's all nice and fits really good within I usually get it within an eighth of an inch because you're probably going to trim it out when you get down make sure when you're doing this that you mark the back you want to make sure because you don't want to get your template backwards because if you do then you're going to ruin your material so this is when when I use my material I'm just going to transfer this onto my material and um, that will give us all the exact dimensions and then once we get and also before you before you cut make your cuts you take this and you make sure it fits so you bring it down in here and make sure it's gonna fit and everything fits good so I'm confident that I can go ahead and cut my material out um, and I'm only going to cut this once so um, it's got to be a little loose though when you lower this and sometimes the plumbing will get it away in the way and you may have to cut this in half and have a seam down there. But for us, this is going to work perfect. We're just going to be able to take that material, slide it down in there, and then that becomes, that becomes our bottom right there. So those are the tricks of the trade. And um, that's it. That's uh, putting together a corner sink. Thanks for watching.